night, Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. I'm gonna show you a quick formula to improve your ET and your effective gear ratio at the racetrack and on the street. Y'all check this out. Couple things, terms you need to know first. Uh, D equals diameter. The diameter, I'm sorry, is the length across the circle here. Circumference is the length all the way around the circle. Starting here, come all the way around, back to there. I'll show you how to test that in just a minute. Your circumference is actually the tire's rollout. So the amount, if this was a tire on a racetrack, as it rolled, the distance it would have to roll all the way back to hit that mark, that's the circumference. Circumference equals the diameter times pi, and pi equals 3.14. Let me show you how this works with effective ratio. Right now, in my race car, the last time I ran... a 28 inch tall tire and a 410 gear. That was the actual gear ratio is 410. And that's in third gear, high gear, one-to-one -one automatic transmission. So if I have a tire that's 28 inches tall and I go to a 26 inch tall tire, I divide 28 by 26, multiply it by 410, that turns my effective ratio into 441. From 410 to a 441, you could probably tell that jump in effective ratio change. Here's another example. This is what I did right now currently. I went from a 28 to a 29 inch tall tire. So I divide 28 by 29, multiply that by 410, and that gives me a 396 gear. From a 396 to a 410, that may not be enough change to even notice. I'll show you also what I did here. This is 28, that was my current tire and I divided it by the other tire that I have measured. Two tires here, they are both Mickey Thompson ET drag slicks. One is a 28 by 9 15. The other is a 28 10 and a half 15 W. This is the actual wheels and tires that came off the back of my Barracuda. And I swapped to a Hoosier 29 uh, 10 5. So just because it says 29, and this says 28 does not mean that the tire is actually an inch taller. How do you determine it? I just got me a piece of nylon rope here. A piece of twine or string would be fine too. And I'm gonna go around, measure the outside of that tire, the circumference, and figure it out from there. But both these tires are 28s. They should be the same. Let me show you that they are not. So both tires aired up to the same pressure. I'm gonna go around the center of the tire gonna pull my rope as tight as I can and I made a mark you can see the mark right there keep your eye on that mark around the center of the tire pulling it as tight as I can that's about a two and a half inch almost three inch difference between the two let me bring you in so you can see it better so what I will do now pull that nice and tight make my mark here you want to check both of your slicks they should be within a half inch of each other if they're not they probably were not a matched set from the factory so that's going to give you a little bit different gear ratio on each tire as they touch the track what i'm going to do now is measure from this end to my new mark and see what the difference is but the second one actually is has a 27.3 inch diameter how did i find that diameter i found the circumference of the tire after I measured my new tire's circumference, I can now put it in a ratio just like I did before with diameter. You can't use circumference and diameter in the same formula, but you can use your old diameter divided by your new diameter times the gear ratio, and that would give you an effective ratio. Or you can use your old circumference divided by your new circumference to times your gear ratio. That will also give you the effective ratio. So I put these in parentheses because you would do that action first before you multiply. So here's my formula. Old tire, circumference 87.96 divided by 90.125 times a 410 gives me an effective ratio of 4.00. That is probably not enough to even notice in a gear change at the racetrack. Here's how it can help you. Here's an example. Say you've got a 74 duster that came factory with a 245 ratio. That's a very high ratio for highway driving. 
It had a D78 size tire, which is actually a 205.75, and it has a diameter of 26.1. You decide you're gonna to go to the racetrack and you need bigger tires. So you go to a 255.60 on the back. That gives you a 27 inch tall tire. So right here, you're gonna take your old ratio or your old diameter, divide it by your new diameter and multiply it by 245. That takes a little bit of your gearing away, which is not gonna help the fact that you already have too high of a gear. What you might consider in this situation, if you want those big tires, is to go ahead and do a gear change. Maybe a 355 would be better here. That would give you the better ratio. But when you go to switch that, you can do simple math just like we did here. So if we change that to a 355, we do that math that will give you a new gear ratio or effective ratio of 343, which is a lot better gear for more low end, better at the racetrack for sure. If you wanted to stick with a factory tire diameter on the back of your 74 Duster or Swinger, you could go to a 235.60, which is a 26.1 inch diameter. And here's the last and final thought for you. If you're gonna go from your 26.1 inch tall tire Someone tells you you need slicks on the back of your car. So you put on a 28 inch tall slick, 26.1 divided by 28 times 245 equals a 228 effective ratio. That will be very sad at the drag strip. In case you wonder why you lost any time when you put your slicks on.